After seeing Mission Impossible the other day, I was fascinated with the idea of whether you can bring storytelling methods from heist movies into vlogs. After some research, yeah, I think so. And maybe, just maybe, one of these techniques can even address this. There's only one kind of comment that penetrates. I'm always seeing a couple of comments that are like, 368 is bullshit. I thought it was gonna be this big thing, you're still just making regular videos and sometimes you hang out in there. It really hurts because when I first announced 368, it was this huge initiative and I've done really nothing as far as you know. Now obviously the goal of 368 is not to steal anything, but the need to gather a team to achieve something much bigger than one person can do is very much a structure of a heist film. And if we look at 368's story through the lens of a heist structure, there's one crucial element that's missing from 368. Is this the reason why there are 368 haters? Let's find out. Hey guys, by the way, my name is King. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe for all the story-related breakdowns of movies and vloggers so you and I can make better vlogs. With that said, let's get right to it. Instead of focusing on the more obvious tropes of the heist stories, like the building of a team, the visualization of planning around obstacles, the big twists and reveals, I'm gonna focus on one aspect. John Truby defines it this way, a time endpoint, also known as a ticking clock, is a technique in which you tell the audience up front that the action must be completed by a specific time. In Mission Impossible, the ticking clock is not a literal clock. It's the inevitability of the guy returning to the computer which has the knock list Ethan is trying to steal. The guy, however, is artificially delayed in the bathroom, throwing up after being poisoned. Basically, if the guy returns before they can steal this knock list, the mission has failed. It is this understanding of the stakes and having a clear definition of what failure and success looks like that creates the drama in these Mission Impossible movies. In 368, on the other hand, that is not so clear. Casey just hasn't really mentioned to the vlog when we should expect 368 to reach its goals. At least I don't think so. In other words, no ticking clock, no drama. Imagine if there was no ticking clock in Mission Impossible, then Ethan and their team could just take their sweet time. No big deal. Yet he continues to upload his classic Day in the Life of Casey vlogs, which ironically is one of my favorites recently, so no complaints here. The truth is, it speaks nothing of 368 unless you count the intro and how he ends the vlog. All right, I think that's it. That's it for 368 today. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. So is that the problem then? When a story has been set up and no ticking clock has been given, and instead we're shown seemingly unrelated stories, that doesn't get us closer to the resolution, then some of the audience can get restless? So what do you guys think? Do you guys use a ticking clock in your vlogs? Do you think 368 needs a ticking clock? Do you guys even care about his vlogs? Would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. So before I go, I'm gonna give you some ideas on how we as vloggers can use this idea of ticking clock to our advantage. But if you're still watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe button and hit the bell so when the next video comes out, you'll be notified. So, ticking clocks. In his book, The Anatomy of Story, John Shuby mentions how a ticking clock can be very effective for something called comic journeys. Without getting too deep into what that means, according to his definition though, I think we can safely swap the words comic journey out for the word vlog and read all the same. A less common but very effective use of the ticking clock is the vlog stories. Any vlog is inherently fragmented and meandering. By telling the audience up front that there is a specific time endpoint to the story, you give them a forward line they can hang on to throughout all the meandering. Instead of getting impatient to know what comes next, they relax and enjoy the comic moments along the way. So if you find your vlogs a bit meandering and directionless, try using a ticking clock. It comes in all forms and sizes, like waiting for someone to come home. Hi, I'm Al Mills and today's my brother's birthday and he hasn't been home all day, so I'm gonna go hide in his closet until he comes home. So this is Jay's room. He hates when people come in. Trying to get home before dark. Yeah, totally lost right now. The sun is setting and uh, he's gonna take the drone out, but...
Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea which way he's back. Or even something as simple as showing a short clip of what's to come later on. Just so the audience knows what's coming and can anticipate for it. So that is all for today. If you learned anything at all, give me a like. If you've got any feedback or suggestions for videos, put them in the comments. And if you have not subscribed yet, make it happen. Thank you so much for your time. Be blessed and I'll see you guys in the next video.